Welcome back to another Fandom Minutes. If you were tuned in last episode, you'll know that Mike has gone missing. He's on the run from the Fairy LEP. While doing research for the Armas Foul books, I've been keeping in touch with him. He got out last week and has been traveling the globe. I've been getting messages from him. Let's tune in and see what he's got. Hey, Mike here. I'm here with my next update. I'm hiding out in a warehouse in France. France? Why are you in France? Listen, man, the instructions for this thing aren't exactly in English. Long story short, I fired up the device. Next thing I know, I'm here. I need your help deciphering the codes for this thing. Uh, I'm forwarding them to you now. Uh, also, I'm compiling some more information that I'll send you your way shortly. Shortly, uh, That should give you some insight. Until then... Okay. So now that we've got this information coming in, I want to talk to you guys about what Artemis Fowl calls Gnomish. So, in the books, Artemis Fowl, we have the language of the fairies, and in the books it is called Gnomish. So, I have, so I have gathered some information on my phone here, and I'm going to read it off to you. This is all talking about the fairy language, and hopefully this will help Mike decipher some of the language on the device. Gnomish is the language of the fairies. It is originally compared by Artemis to the Egyptian hieroglyphs. When Artemis Fowl and other characters speak Gnomish in the books, they are clearly speaking another language, but the reader translatable Gnomish written on the bottom of each page of the books directly co uh, but the reader transla but the reader translatable Gnomish written on the bottom of each page of the book directly corresponds to English letters. Due to Gnomish similarity to hieroglyphics, it was assured, due to gnomish similarities to hieroglyphics, it was assumed by Artemis that early Egyptians might have adopted an already existing writing style instead of coming up with a new one. It is also mentioned that gnomish is a mix of symbolic and alphabetic letters. It was originally written in spirals starting from the middle of the page and ending at the edge, but since reading the spirals gives most fairies migraines, most modern fairy scripts is arranged in horizontal lines nowadays. So far, Artemis Fowl is the only human who is fluent in Gnomish, and this comes in pretty handy, as one would expect. In the books, lines of translatable Gnomish run along the bottom of, the, of Artemis Fowl, the Eternity Code, op the Opal Deception, the Lost Colony, and the Time Paradox. In the Arctic Incident, Gnomish script is typed at the end. There is also a book called the Artemis Fowl Files, which I have here. In this book, there is a translation exercise, which I completed. So if you look at the front of the very first Artemis Fowl book, you can see Gnomish here. And I'll bring up a picture on the side here. This code translates to the first part of the fairy book, or the, the book of the people. And it translates to, carry me always, carry me well. I am thy teacher of herb and spell. So, now that you know a little bit about Gnomish, we found out that there's also a change that's happening. So as we know, Artemis Fowl came out with a new movie. Again, it's different. As you can see on the right here, er, yeah. Yeah. As you can see on the right here, we have the old Gnomish font. But, the movie has changed it yet again. On the right, here is the new Gnomish font. Here is an example of the font in the book. So, which one do we believe? The original old font, or do we go with this movie's version of the font? Which will help him read it better. Let's get back with Mike and see what else he's got. Hey. Here's that intel, I promise you. Uh, there's some interesting things here. Let me know what you think. Okay. I'm going to stay on the, on the line here with you. Okay. So, let's bring this up. And... Got it. So, first off, 
It appears we have some translations. It looks like he's found the rest of the book translation for the beginning of the fairy Bible. It is... Okay, I think I found it. So the last part from the Book of the People, the first lines of it read, Carry me always, carry me well. I am thy teacher of herb and spell. I am the, I am thy link to powers arcane. Forget me, and thy magic shall wane. Um, I also see different links to lore from fairies around the world. This is from Ireland. It's posted in 2016 by the British, by the British about fairy mythology. The fairy language. What language do fairies speak? The normal rule is that the fairies will speak the same language as the human neighbors. Reverend Kirk states this explicitly in the Secret Commonwealth, section 5. Their apparel and speech is like that of the people and country under which they live. They speak but little, and that by a way of whistling, clear not rough. The very the very devils conjure in any country do answer in the language of the place, yet sometimes the subterraneans speak more distinctly than at other times. Hmm. John Rhines relayed a story of a mermaid from North Wales in which the reporter observed skeptically, We do not know what language is used by sea maidens, but this one, this time at any rate, it is said, spoke very good Welsh. That is from the Brighton, Volume 1, page 82. The situation is to be expected, and that communication would otherwise be very difficult, if not impossible, and interaction very much reduced. Most of our fairy tales are found upon meeting between humans and fairies, so that mutual intelligibility is vital. This ability to converse means that humans may overhear or engage in conversation. Uh, sometimes they speak Gaelic in the Highlands, Welsh in the Wales, and English in England and go further and exmoor fairy sounds just like the Somerset peasant. So, what's interesting about that is in Artemis Fowl it talks about the fairies having the gift of tongues where they can speak any language. Here it talks about their tone of voice. Given a widespread belief that some fairies at least were of smaller stature than human population, they have voices that match. Kirk has already implied this, but other sources are clear on the point. So, in Cardiganshire, little beings came to a farmhouse at night asking for shelter in thin, silvery voices. The pixies encountered on Selina Moor near St. Burian were said to have speaked with little voices. They have also been heard using what was considered jabbering talk. Much of British fairy lore depends upon the ability of humans and supernatural to have contact and to form relationships. Nevertheless, the fairy's speech is sometimes said to be incomprehensible, or even not to resemble human speech at all. Wirt Sykes in British Goblins recorded that Thomas Williams met a fairy possession, heard them talking together in a noisy, jabbering way, but no one could distinguish the words. Other witnesses from Wales state the same. They did not understand a word that was said, not a syllable did they comprehend. Whilst in another couple of encounters, we are assured it was not Welsh, and she did not think it was English either. Finally, we must note the various curious tale told by Gerald Elliger by Gerald of Wales. Elliger, as a boy, escorted to an underground realm, and subsequently spent much time there with the fairies. Years later, as a priest, he told his tale, and in particular, that he had made himself acquainted with the language of the nation the words of which in his younger days he used to recite, which, as the bishop often had informed me, were very com conformable to the Greek idiom. From what we can tell, the clerk in question appears to be concocting his elvish tongue out of elements of Welsh and Irish, which perhaps some awareness of Latin and Greek in the background. It is not, therefore, to be relied upon very much as an account of traditional beliefs. A better summary may be to say that, in general, fairies were regarded in many respects as being identical or similar to humans, not just in speech, but also in form, diet, dress, and conduct. Sometimes, however, their otherworldly aspects dominated and their speech was as alien as their magical abilities.
It's interesting. Some good information. We also have from the Britannica website the art of fairies. Fairy. Uh, the fairies are mythical beings of folklore and romance, usually having magic powers and dwelling on Earth in close relationship with humans. It can appear as a dwarf creature, typically having green clothes and hair, living underground or in stone heaps, and characteristically exercise magic powers to benevolent ends, as a diminutive spirit commonly in the shape of a delicate, beautiful, ageless-winged woman dressed in diphanious, diphanious white clothing, inhabiting fairyland, but making usually well-intentioned interventions in personal human affairs, or as a tiny, mischievous, and protective creature generally associated with the household health. Uh, while the term fairy goes back only to the Middle Ages in Europe, analogies to these beings in various forms appear in both written and oral literature from the Sanskrit's Gandharva and semi-divine celestial music to the nymphs of Greek mythology and Homer to the genii of Arabic mythology. And similar folk characters of the Simonians and the Arctic peoples, and of other indigenous Americans. The common modern depiction of fairies in children's stories represents a boulderization of which was once a serious and even sinister fol folkloric tradition. The fairies of the past were feared as dangerous and powerful beings who were sometimes friendly to humans but could also be cruel and mischievous. Uh, we can skip some of this, but... Yeah, it's a lot of cool information I got here. Um, so apparently Mike's found a symbol. It's called the Tristal, and it's history behind this ancient Celtic symbol. It's the only symbol that we've found so far that appears to possibly be related to the original fairies. Ah, oh, this time has come to talk about the Tristal. I guess I've been putting this one off as it would conclude my list of 10 ancient Celtic symbols, this author writes. Did you know the triple spiral has been speculated to be the oldest symbol, symbol of spirituality, often referred to by many as the Triskelion. Triskelion. Its earliest creation dates back to the Neolithic era, as it can be seen at the entrance of Newgrin, England. We'll post a picture of it here. Today, I will be talking about the Triskel, aka the Spiral, and of course, as many, as with many of the other Celtic symbols, as many, as well as many of the other Celtic symbols, this finds its way into many forms of artworks and tattoos and enthusiasts. From its pre-Celtic origins, the Triskel has become widespread in Celtic art and agriculture. Versions are found on ancient monuments across Ireland. Once again, you can see that the Celts loved all things in threes. The spiral could have changed over the centuries, but the basic meanings include the three stages of life, such as life, death, and rebirth, or the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or earth, sea, sky, or past, present, and future. While the main differences are visual aspects, there are more similarities and differences between the Triquetra and the Triskel. Both are holy symbols to Christians and to pagans. Now when I say it has made many appearances throughout history, you might be thinking to the above image of the 5,000 year old Newgrund entrance and are not overly impressed. But while we're here, we also have a jug here that clearly shows the Triskel symbol, and this was dated to ancient Egypt. Not only was it in Celtic times in Ireland and Scotland, it was also in ancient Egypt all the way back to 1400 to 1350 BC. You may know the symbol as the Triskelion, but both terms come from the Greek word tree, or three, and skelos, which means leg. The spiral and the triple spiral are among the oldest spiritual symbols created by humans, or so they say. What do you think of that information? Pretty good information. I, I feel like there might be something there. Uh, okay. One of the things that you said on there, uh, something about the um, carry me always, carry me well. Yes. 
would it be safe to assume that that's kind of like a almost like their little um, abracadabra kind of thing? Kind of like a magic term to get everything started or to start a spell? Some sort. Uh, let me run some diagnostics on my end and we'll see what we can come up with. Alright, let me know because I'm getting a little sketched out here. Okay. Seeing I'll be here. I'll be fast. Okay, so that's not bringing anything up. Hold on. So it appears, yes, it appears that is the beginning of their fairy bible and that that might be some type of incantation you might be able to use to activate the device. All right, let's give that a shot. Okay, I wish you luck. Hurry back. If that works, then... Crap. Matt, we got what? a problem. What is it? They found me. Get out of there. Darn it! We lost the feed! <sighs> when is he going to get back? Okay. Everyone tune in next time to see if Mike comes back and if he's got the device in hand. Hopefully he'll get back soon. We need this device in our possession as fast as possible to keep it out of harm's way. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more fandom videos.